So the purpose of this video is to show you a different way of producing tracks. I have a project in front of me here with three distinct sections. We have a verse, pre-chorus, and chorus, and they're going to sound production-wise very differently. So because of that, I'm going to work on them in different projects using project tabs. So let's hear what we have. I was sent a guitar stem and a vocal stem. Let's hear it. I complicate things. One of my many skills. I'm making things up. All in my mind, cause I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said, That's just the weight of the world. It's not personal, it's just how it works. Don't be angry for too long, we'll get burned. Cause that's just the weight of the world. Notice how different each section sounds from the verse, pre chorus, and chorus. And because of that, I want to produce them very differently and therefore in different projects using project tabs. So the first thing we'll do is we'll save them in different tabs. So go to File, Save Project As. And it's already saved with the name. I'm going to save a version as verse. Then I'll do it again. I'll use the keyboard shortcut. Alt Control S on the PC, Option Command S on the Mac, and save this one as pre chorus, and do it again, and save this one as chorus. So now we have four versions of the song one we could use for the verse, pre chorus, chorus, and put it all back together into the first project. So now we should open all the tabs. Go to File, go to Recent Projects. Hold down the shift key, open verse, shows up right here. Do the same thing with the shift key for the pre chorus and the chorus. So now we have multiple tabs up here the main project, the verse, the pre chorus, and the chorus. So now we could produce this song completely separately and put it back together later. So let's start with the verse, which again sounds like this. I complicate things One of my many skills I'm making things up All in my mind cause So let's start with a kick part. We'll go to the View menu, go to the Media Explorer, and I've already set up a folder right here for all the samples I want to use. So let's start with the kick. Now I could right click, go down here to insert into sample player and choose to insert it on a new track. But instead, I'm gonna go up here to the options menu to default action and change it. So when we double click on a sample, it's gonna insert the media into a sample player on a new track. So now I can just double click the kick sample. It creates this track. With the resample matic plugin on the track with a sample already in there. So now we can trigger it through MIDI. I'll put the track into record, make sure it's set to MIDI input. Now, if I play my MIDI keyboard, which you can now see down here, hitting any key, it's going to trigger the kick. So let's play a kick part for the verse. I complicate things One of my many skills I'm making things up All in my mind cause And we could stop before the pre-chorus So now I'm going to add a finger snaps sample Open the Media Explorer Choose it right here We just double click it it puts it right here, and we could do the same thing. Put it in record and play a finger snap part. I complicate things. 
One of my many skills I'm making things up All in my mind cause That sounds good. Next we'll add a brush sound to go between the finger snaps. Right here. Again, double click it, which creates that track, put it in record, and just record that part. But to make this more interesting, I'm gonna add a delay to this to make it repeat. And I saved one down here as an effects chain called panning delay, which is basically a panning delay using parameter modulation and set to eighth notes. So it's gonna pan back and forth like this. So let's record the brush part. I complicate things. One of my many skills. I'm making things up. All in my mind, cause. And then finally, let's add some claps on every other hit. Double click it. It adds it right here. Put the track into record, and let's record the clap part. I complicate things. One of my many skills. I'm making things up. All in my mind, cause. And that sounds good for the verse. Let's move on to the pre chorus. We can save this. Go to the next tab and just concentrate on the pre-chorus. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said. Again, we'll start with the kick. Choose a kick sample. Double click it. It adds a track right here. Put it in record. Let's record the kick for the pre chorus. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said. Take it out of record. Let's add the finger snaps to this section. Double click it, put it into record, and record the finger snaps for the pre chorus. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said. Then we'll add some claps. Do the same thing. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said. Next, we'll add a tambourine, which we haven't added to the song yet. We're just adding it in the pre-chorus. Right here, double click it. It's right down here, put it into record, and record the tambourine. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. My mama said, and finally, we add a shaker to the pre-chorus. Right here, double click it, shows up right down here, which adds a rhythm to the pre-chorus that doesn't exist in the verse. I analyze their body language. I hear every change in their tone. Maybe they hate me, somehow I play me. That sounds pretty good for the pre-chorus, so let's save it, 
Let's move on to the chorus. And we'll do the same thing. Build a production around this very specific part, which happens to feel very different from the others. Once again, we'll start with the kick. Put it into record. Let's put it up here. And let's record the kick part for the chorus. Said, that's just the weight of the world. It's not personal, it's just how it works. Don't be angry for too long or get burned. Cause that's just the weight of the world. Notice how much more upbeat this sounds, as the rhythm of the chorus is going to be very different. Let's add a snare, which is also a sound we haven't used yet, right here. Double click it. It adds a snare right here. Put it into record. Let's put down the snare part. That's just the weight of the world. It's not personal, it's just how it works. Don't be angry for too long or get burned. Cause that's just the weight of the Next, we'll add some hi hats, which again is a sound we haven't used. And for this, we're going to use two hi hats a closed one and an open one. So for this, we'll double click the closed one, which shows up here. Then we'll copy and paste this. So you have two hi hats on this track. Reopen Media Explorer, choose the open hat. Right click it, go to insert into sample player, and reuse active sample player, which puts it right here. And the close one right here. So to trigger it with different keys, I'll give this a number. Let's do 42, which is F sharp, just the velocity. So it's velocity sensitive. Do the same with the open hat, but give it a different key. 246, which is A sharp or B flat. And for this, let's turn on obey note offs. So if we play the note and let go, it stops short, which will choke the open hat. So now we could put down both hi hat parts together. Go into record and let's record it. Sounding good. Let's add to it with some of the other percussion we had in the other parts. Let's add the tambourine. On every other snare, like this. That's just the weight of the world. It's not personal, it's just how it works. Don't be angry for too long or get burned. Cause that's just the weight of the world. And then finally, I want to add a crash or a splash to accent the downbeat of the chorus. But instead of using the sampler, let's just choose it, right click it, and choose insert on new track, which puts it right here. Let's move it over to here and also over here. Let's hear that. Now I'm pretty happy with the chorus. Now we want to put all these parts together. And we can do that just using copy and paste. Let's go back to the first tab. This is where we're going to put all the parts. We'll go to the verse. And we don't need the guitar and vocal. We can just copy these tracks. Copy them. Paste them into this tab. And now we have the verse part in the main project. Or project tab. I complicate things. One of my many skills. I'm making things up. All in my mind. Cause Let's do the same with the pre chorus. 
and just choose these tracks, copy and paste them in here. But notice we have multiple tracks with the same part, like our kick. So I'm going to choose to lock our movement to prevent left right movement. So we can't put our items out of time when we move them. So now I can grab the kick, let's move it up to here, delete this track, take the finger snaps, put them up here, delete this track, let's put the brushes up here, take the claps and move it here, delete this track, let's make this all smaller. Now the tracks are combined. Let's do the same with the chorus. Select all the tracks, except for the guitar and vocal, copy them, and paste them into the main project. Bring the kick up to here, delete the kick. Let's move the snare up here. And the hi hat. Let's put the tambourine next to the tambourine. Move it up here, delete it. And the splash all by itself. And now, we can see all our parts and the multiple parts are all on the tracks. So it's condensed for one track per part, even though they play in different sections. So now we should have a full production with different parts playing from one to the other with completely different feels or rhythms. So let's hear that. I complicate things. One of my many skills. I'm making things up All in my mind Cause I analyze their body language I hear every change in their tone Maybe they hate me Somehow I play me My mama said Sounds pretty good. Like I said, each part has a different rhythm or a different feel altogether. But by producing them in different tabs and copying and pasting them into one tab or one project at the end, it can make it a lot easier to do the production, as we can really focus on one section at a time. And we can still save all these tabs later to add and remove things to them, or just work on the final project once you get to this step. Either way, I think it's a creative way of working on each section at a time, especially with a song like this, where the parts are so different. So that's pretty much it. That's production using multiple tabs in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.